Fairphone was really interesting to talk to. They actually contacted us after um, the Right to Repair video went live because they wanted to chat about their phone. Uh, they're this company from Amsterdam, and they make phones that are supposed to be as basically like repairable as possible. Mm -hmm. um, they are not the newest phones. I think the newest one is still running on Android 10, and they use like generally lower end Qualcomm processors. Um, but for people who like really care about like replacing individual things in their phones, they make it really easy. So you can either swap out the screen. Everything is it's almost like Project Aura in a way from Google. If you yeah, guys I'm remember at that the site, yeah, okay, very similar. Like they have these modules. Um, the Fairphone Three Plus is actually just the Fairphone Three, but they released some updated camera modules. So if you don't want to buy a Three Plus, you can actually swap out the cameras mm. in the Three. And then you have a three plus, right? So anything that breaks or if things get better, you can sort of just upgrade it almost like a PC. But then again, you get that downside of, okay. I, and I asked him in particular, I was like, well, a lot of people replace their phones because they start to feel slow, right? And if you're using these like mid-ranged older Qualcomm processors, like are people are really going to be mm -hmm. excited about that? I mean, a big part of the marketing in like any new chipset launch or any new phone launch is how much faster the new processor, the best processor we've ever made, right? Um, but Fairphone wants to take a different approach. And this was really interesting to me. They said, ideally, they would like their customers to have one of their phones for seven years. Even with spare parts, even with having to change your battery after two years and a half uh, and doing the, the some upgrades uh, when you want, you still end up in those 30% uh, reduction. If we even push it to seven years, which may sound super crazy, but it's technologically not impossible, we think, you would be talking about 45% reduction. And that's using the same type of phones, right? We're only talking about extending the use, uh, the use phase. Because the refresh cycle of general phones is like two to three now. And mm -hmm. you know, if you're a real tech head, you replace your phone like every year. So they want people to use these phones and they're like, okay, my screen broke, I'll buy a new screen module, slap it on. My camera broke, I'll buy a new camera module, slap it on. Right. Um, but again, you've got all these downsides, which is like, you can't make it faster. They do guarantee five years of software updates. Okay. But they said only when it's needed. So it's That's not also a hard like, guarantee when you want seven year life. To not guarantee. Yeah, the and year. also, and also, like a chipset doesn't necessarily support, you know, the software that long. So it's kind of a it's it's a weird thing. A, a big part of the way they made the company is because they are actually trying to make the world like more sustainable. He brought mm -hmm. up this good point of the fact that like. So if you if you look at the at the whole um, ecosystem of materials, um, every year only around 10% actually less. So there's some reports that said like somewhere between nine and 10% of material that is used in industry and in all the different industries, not only in the consumer electronics industry, only 10% gets recycled. So the other 90% is just stuff that ends up either in hibernation, eh? so in the drawers, in our homes, or in a landfill, but it does not get recycled. And this is, so every year, I just want to make this picture, every year 90% comes from the ground, uh, from a mine, let's say, and gets landfill to make it super simplistic. It does not get recycled. The amount of devices that we have just sitting in our drawers and stuff, not being utilized when they could be utilized, and then other people are going out and buying new things. But there's there's actually a cobalt shortage right now, which is this rare earth metal that's used in a lot of batteries and a lot of devices, and it's just using a ton of devices. And they've been working really, really hard to try to make the mines of these cobalt mines like have better working conditions and to get more value out of the mines while also like treating the people better because obviously it's like really mm -hmm. bad, not great. And it's 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 we're at this point where it's like kind of sad because we have all these devices sitting in our drawers that have cobalt in them. And if you you can recycle, I think he said about 90, 80 to 90% of the mm -hmm. cobalt in devices pretty effectively. And yet there's a, a shortage when we have all these devices, every single person has an old phone or an old this or that oh, yeah. that has cobalt in it. It creates a lot of waste and being in that kind of environmentalist front um, as an architecture student, I have to worry a lot about where these products that I'm using for my education go. It's kind of antithetical. If I'm 
you know, practicing sustainable building and sustainable uh, design, I need to make sure that the things I'm using do not contribute to something that I'm trying to stop. Yeah, this is really curious to me. I'm going to try to make a, an analogy, but it will see if it works or not. But I think it's really interesting that they still, despite being modular, expect it to last seven years and then you get rid of it. And I wonder what that limiting factor is. Is it just because it's going to get too slow after seven years and won't support the software anymore? Or is it just because, pe well, the other thing is how many people want to buy a phone that isn't as performant because it will be more repairable in the future? Um, and you're talking about how there's so much cobalt in the world, but it's inside of gadgets that we don't use anymore. And I'm thinking like, I remember when I get like a, a notebook for school and I would like take notes on like half the pages. And then once the class was over, I didn't need to take notes on it anymore. And I just got rid of that notebook. I didn't use the last 50 pages in the book. They're perfectly usable blank mm. pages, but I just don't feel the need to use those because they're part of something I'm done using. Right. And it's like, is there going to be any way to get people to want to use their old gadgets, to want to repair, to want to take advantage of these extra resources we know we have? Or do people just want the newest thing no matter what? It feels like that's kind of yeah, where we're Yeah, and at. It's, it's like where capitalism is at. I think that's what, you know, people always want the newest thing. Yeah. It's just that conversation was so interesting to me because it's another angle of right to repair. There's so many angles now. There's the like... You should be able to do whatever you want with the devices you own. There's the you should be able to fix anything and have access to the parts that the manufacturers have. And then there's also the sustainability angle of like yeah. we are destroying our planet by just like replacing our devices constantly. And so that's like that's like three or four different major angles to to this idea. Yeah. And I think that's also a little I don't want to say it's downfall, but a reason why the messaging has not been really loud. Yeah, it's not it's not as easy to lump everything into one easy to adjustable sentence, you know? Mm -hmm.